Hello, welcome to another Friday Facebook Live art demo with Studio Central. So for those that don't know, Studio Central is part of Artbeat, which is a nonprofit organization that believes in using heart, heart art as a tool to work on mental healing and mental wellness. So Studio Central is our open studio, which is located in Portage, Portage Place. I cannot speak today. Um, and um, it's a free studio for anyone 18 plus, and we're here at Upbeat Artworks right across the hall from Studio Central, um, which is our gallery. So we will start with a uh, showcase of one of our artists like we've been doing for the last few weeks. So I'll flip around the camera and we can get right to that. Yeah. Today we are going to be talking about Abby, our friend Abby. <laughs> um, so this is Abby Wall. Uh, I, I'm sure you guys all recognize her from her amazing uh, contribution to everything here. <laughs> um, as an artist, as like a leader at the shop, as uh, a participant in all, all of these lives that uh, we have so, so much fun doing. Um, but as you can see, Abby's holding up her, uh, her calendar here, uh, which has a ton of her art in it. It is absolutely breathtaking. And um, what you can do is, is pick up one of these calendars, have her art year round that you get to appreciate. And then afterwards you can actually like frame these pieces and it's, it's like, you get all, all these prints, it's amazing. Um, Abby also has her cards here. Uh, they're variety packs of cards. Uh, you get 10 in a pack and they are amazing. Look at her fruit and look at these cacti. These cacti are life. Oh my goodness. I love them. <laughs> she, you should see her face. She's, she's laughing at me. Everybody's laughing at me and I love it, but that's okay. But um, no, her art is gorgeous. It is colorful. It is bright. It is vibrant. It just makes me happy. And um, there you go. <laughs> there are so many, so many lively things, and that is what I love. But let me tell you a little bit about Abby. <laughs> um, so Abby was uh, Winnipeg born, a group in a household of six adoptees from diverse backgrounds, uh, warrior women who carried pain in their eyes. She says that uh, was her Aboriginal siblings who uh, really took care of her. She later studied acting as, or sorry, acting and has, um, I cannot speak today. <laughs> it's because she's right here and I don't want to do her injustice because she is amazing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna restart that sentence. Um, she later studied acting and has done stand-up comedy and improv. She also studied classical voice uh, conservatory in grade eight and has more recently sung jazz and written songs. About five years ago, she added painting to her repertoire and has so far um, had three solo shows, but in this domain, she is self-taught. She paints in acrylic on canvas using ink. Uh, how do you pronounce that? Spl splatter? Um, splatter? Oh, just splatters? Oh, okay. Is that what it is? It looks like there might be a typo, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> As highlights. Um, yes, ink splatter. That makes sense. <laughs> Abby says uh, early influences include Japanese anime, the work of pinup illustrator uh, Gil El Elgren. Yes. Okay, very cool. And our Archie comic characters, Betty and Veronica. Oh my gosh, I love those. <laughs> um, her twist on these uh, precedents to embody the personalities of women uh, I can recognize in all shapes and sizes. Uh, including especially women of color whom she considers underrepresented in art where she portrays partial nudity it is not to focus on sex but to better explore human form and movement her colors are bright and her backgrounds vibrant ranging from cosmic to psychedelic to plaids reminiscent of traditional jamaican uh, bandana or mad madras uh, patterns I'm an extrovert, Abby says, so painting is my company when no one's around. I'm prolific and will stick with a project for 12 hours at a time. 
our heels and feeds me. Well, I'd say that's pretty amazing. And these colors, like, oh, they're, they're amazing. <laughs> and this is a new piece from Abby. And if you are going to come and purchase it, it will be in our database today. And it will be displayed as soon as it, as it is possible. Yay! We love you, Abby. Oh, thank you. Hello, we're here. Megan, Abby, Kate, Nature, and Ollie. We are all here to actually work on something very pleasant to work to me. Uh, not to everyone, not everyone's hands have their dexterity. So we're going to have a relaxing time. So we're just setting our minds to not let ourselves down today. <laughs> not about how good it looks it's about getting used to uh, something if you want to let it in your artwork or just creating something of your own uh, so whatever uh, is going on here I'm starting with making a painting it's bigger painting but uh, recommendations for everyone are not there because you can either follow and take some tips and hints, exchange, idea exchange, anything. Or you can just make any anything of your own and it does not have to be figure drawing. I do, it can be any other technique. Uh, not everyone is into figure drawing as well. So it's figure painting. Where we start with um, talking a little bit about the measurements which I do not use myself. So, <laughs> I started drawing when I was a little girl. <laughs> so what I was doing, I was just drawing and I was never measuring anything. And the proportions, they're just set the way they are. And I actually, usually when people draw paint, they draw paint. And then if they want to measure it, they can measure it and adjust. But I was not doing that. My measurement was eye measurement, basically. So I was just looking, okay, I want to make a head smaller, uh, something bigger, shoulders need to be bigger, and something else I didn't like how it looks like. So I was just perfecting it by repetition rather than measuring and trying to get the exact measurement. I'm not good at measurement. Uh, we had the class for, um, you know, what, uh, all kind of deep blueprint designs and whatever is for architecture or any exact measurement, uh, exact shapes, and it was just terrible on me. And the teacher left, so I did not have much of that at school. I'm not even sure I remember anything, but I did not like the subjects, and then the teacher just left, and we didn't have any new teacher. So I do no. not know if it affected it anyhow, but I just do not like measuring when I paint. Mm -hmm. And when painting requires measurement, it's not my thing. I try to do everything by, uh, let's say, memory and what I can yeah. see, what I can do. If I can do better, I rely on my head, my eyes, and my hands rather than yeah. the ruler. <laughs> you can also learn it by like observation and not like f focusing on every single measurement. So what we have here, uh, uh, these are the two books from the same author. Uh, this is actually art for children, art for not children, uh, how to draw <laughs> anything or how to draw and paint people. So this is junior painters, this is more adult painters, but I would say I can take tips and hints for everyone from this too. Mm -hmm. And um, I would probably suggest another way of doing it because a lot of people can read a book not a lot of people can transfer it onto an actual skill <laughs> right so i would just say that uh adults the head fits roughly seven and a half times into the height of the body if it means something to you okay if it doesn't that's all right the elbow is about halfway down the arm when the arms hang at the sides the tips of the fingers reach down halfway between the hips and the knees, the legs start about halfway down the body, the knee is about halfway down the leg, the ideal form, although no two people are exactly alike, it is helpful to memorize the proportions of the ideal figure shown here. 
and keep this in mind as you draw. I do not know if it's ideal figure for you, <laughs> but uh, it, it's hard to see the ideal different to you, I believe. I would not say this is ideal to me. Uh, anyway, measuring the body. We are drawing a woman's body rather than a man's body today. And this is my, uh, I would think it's easier to start with women's bodies and then move on to like to there, myself first. They're sometimes more fun to draw too because they've just got more curves. <laughs> right, curves. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the proportions can be here uh, and they can be here. So you can just look if, mm -hmm. if it helps. Honestly, when I look in, in the book and I read numbers, and something like that, it does not go I anywhere in my consciousness. Mm -hmm. It just does not stay there. So if I make something, I do not even know if I have any influence of uh, what was written in the book. So yeah. I can be influenced uh, by what I see when I paint and draw, but I cannot really tell. I, I know I just do any girls. I can do girls. They're gonna learn <laughs> by the measurements. <laughs> they're gonna be there oh yeah what i like <laughs> about these is the fact that more than actually like reading them i just like having pose references yeah, i never know how to draw people like what poses to put them in well i, I would like sometimes to come up unnatural yeah. like does your yeah. hip go that way no it doesn't but if, if that's like here you go you can do stylization right, so everyone too. got right. a piece of paper so we're starting with mixing a skin tone okay uh, the books, you can just leave them under under the table somewhere. Thanks. Okay, so I am just having several paints here. I borrowed four from Studio Central. Let's memorize. These are the burnt umber. Can I have some burnt umber? Uh, we will, uh, I will distribute everything. Yeah, uh, this is coral. I never tried coral, but we want to mix those two. This is the burnt sienna, I believe. Yeah. And this one is black that I brought some. I cannot guarantee I have enough for everyone. But this is what I brought from home. Uh, so this is warm white, warm beige, light pink, tutti frutti pink, tutti -frutti. I love that. white, black, deep red, and all this reds that are here, white and gray. Uh, these are bright red, red, carmine, brick, and this is black. If I don't know why I brought the black, because I pulled one anyway. So uh, we have, like, usually we start with three basic colors. So everyone gets brown, which is just burnt umber. Everyone gets uh, light pink and everyone gets white. Mm -hmm. So everyone gets three of this at first. I would like to do a woman of color. Okay, so I might not need pink as much, or, mm -hmm. or maybe yeah. red to do light. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. just to get the undertone. Well, you without, without just have a bunch that. of different colors just so you can mix. So we we'll start with just this. anyway because I know <laughs> I just give smaller amount to Abby because Abby does not need a lot of that a little tiny bit thank you then I would need more I think I'm interested in the coral there. Uh, it's after. Oh, okay. It's after. So first of all, we just mix from this tree. So whichever you are getting, and I do not touch this yet. Thank you. Oh, and does Ali have? I think there's. This is Ali. Oh, that has one. So here. <laughs> Three, okay, so oh, it's Neapolitan ice cream. Mm -hmm. oh, Neapolitan. Yeah, <laughs> that is necessary. Yes. 
So everyone is going to mix the uh, shade you want. Okay. So let's start with, a lot of people like making several piles of white and then start adding into each pile. Could I still use a little bit of the coral because I feel like to make the color that I am interested it's in? It's after, after. So we're mixing the first this and then we're going to uh, you can just use this okay. after, That's it. Okay. whichever we're getting first would be used as well. Sometimes when I paint people, I just like to make them pure white because I don't want to have to worry about skin tones and then I give them like weird colored blush. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I'd like them to look like ghosts a little bit. Okay, so what I got here is this. So if I add more brown, so what is the task? The task is to reach something and then other colors would be participating as well. So as an example, if we want to make this our primary tone, skin color, we would be combining it with what we mix. So you can mix a lighter shade and darker shade and you can mix this with what you pre-mixed before. So if you want to have it like your basic shade, yeah. Uh, then that one would be a complementary shade because yeah. you need both, right? Yeah. So I would get some of the coral as an example. I've gotten a nice one except it's very cold. It's a very cold hue. I'd like to add burnt sienna to warm it up. That's beautiful. Mm. Thank you. Okay. okay, so everyone can get a little bit of coral. And you can try mixing coral with what you pre-mixed before, but it needs to be pre-mixed. Yeah. So you can add a little tiny bit and receive a different shade than that is just a pure yeah. color. Can I try some of that? Yeah. And that's perfect. So as an example, I can mix coral with dark brown. and add a little tiny bit of pink and I'm getting a different shade which is actually really nice. I'm going to end up giving up and making a Neapolitan person. Do and it. then we can try this one. So this is just cream, warm white. I think Camira's is not represented nearly enough in art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Here. Thank you. Not for skin specifically, but I love that cream color. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's yes. just... And then we can try <laughs> this warm beige. And when you mix warm beige with brown, you will receive a really nice as well. Oh my, did it dry? Uh -huh. Okay. I'm not sure I can get it out. So we would... Let's see. Okay, I can. <laughs> oh. There we go. So just talking about mixtures, I want to show as much as we can here, not just your personal input, but also when we talk to someone you don't see, you don't know what they need, right? So I'll give you some. There. Okay. So we're getting all kinds of different shades. And from all this, we can create any skin color, except of some that would not have the right shade that uh, I would not say every single uh, is yeah. covered. You can only go so dark with. But most of them can be represented like yeah. this. Also, we need to consider shading because we're working with more than just one skin tone. So we are not just taking tan and painted all tan. We're going to work with the side, we're going to uh, have the base, so we need more than one shade in this case. Okay. I 
I'm very pleased with my color. Awesome. They paint two people and have one of them really pale. And so we have really different dark. shades. Yeah. And I want to work with something, so favorite. I have the variety for myself to work with. And some people think that it's just enough to have two colors. You can have like brown and tan, and then have the outline with brown and tan in it's the so middle, bad. then white for the highlight. And then you can throw in some pink in some spaces. I like yours. Thank you. Okay, so basically any skin tone that you want to reach, uh, if you have burnt sienna, burnt umber, you're getting the most of them, I would take burnt sienna as well. Okay, here. So everyone can have a little bit of this. We have black here. <clears throat> some people like outline, some people don't like the outline. You can always mix in black in the uh, skin tone you have. Or you can just paint directly with black and then add on shoe. So it would be a combination of like it would be mixed directly on paper, not on uh, a palette. And then I'm using a smaller, uh, you that can try your skin tone on a piece of paper yeah. that you have. <laughs> so here I have this, I have this, I have this. So this is something that we're reaching with a combination of. Okay, so we can go from here. Okay, everyone got wet wipes. So a recommendation would be to wipe your brush after uh, usage so the water doesn't get too dirty. And we'll start. So let's focus the camera on the paper here. I usually start with drawing a head and then I go from there. It's not, it's, it's recommended, so, uh, but it's a natural choice. Okay, so I would just draw with brown and then I would be mixing other skin tones in inside. So I always start with either black or brown. I'm just drawing. So this is an oval shape, but I also consider that in the bottom, the chin, it's not oval, uh, rather it's more, like some people add triangles or kind of round mm -hmm. shape or anything. I do not work on this part too much because I just uh, define it there. And then for the ears, the look from the front is two lines on the sides, and then just in the center. We can make them a bit higher, a bit lower. So this is something we have here. So I do not draw any hair at first, any clothing. I, uh, in this case, then we would add the neck. And the neck, if it's too thin, it's like a kiss drawing. If it's too thick, it's not looking good. So we need to find a good combination. So here's something that is working for me. Okay, then we have the shoulders. And usually I draw shoulders naturally, but for, for the sheet, we can use this method, which is round. Round shape, uh, like 
it's easier to start with if you're a learner, a good learner, and you don't know how to draw. That would be easier to begin with. Should they be on the same level? So this person is standing just straight. And if you want to have a different angle, uh, they could be, one could be higher, one could be lower. So that would be an angle. But we're just drawing a figure from the front. Then usually it's good to have a vertical, not vertical, so horizontal oval right here. And then another oval would be for the uh, for the hips. So this would be connected with a curve unless you want to add more here, but we're talking about ideal something. <laughs> and then we could always go from there. Then we have the legs. And usually for posture, it's good to use this technique. We basically have two ovals. These are, these are the two ovals right here. And some people do draw the knee around here, but I would not usually do it myself. But if you just want to draw it, I usually don't. And then we have the bottom of the leg. And it's, it can be an oval, or it can be um, just a bottom of the leg, so that depends on what is easier for you. But we just need to consider that the ankle is usually very thin comparably to all other parts. Okay, so I want to make the hips bigger. distance that will leave here between. But when we close the person, it might not be even visible. So that depends on what you put. So we're going to have the clothing part, but uh, that part would probably, mm, I don't know if we can fit it all in, uh, <laughs> in our video. Mm -hmm. getting it good. Okay, then same stuff with hands. We have a posture, but this posture is again, it's the front, very front, and we could For the palm, it might be complicated sometimes, so some people draw the palm by itself. 
I usually don't draw a thumb. Because when you draw a thumb and start doing fingers out of it, it might be hard. So everyone can develop. I will just have this part, like a triangle, the big finger, and then the fingers can go out of this part right here. So if you notice, like this part that goes out of the thumb is just like a triangle. And then I add the bottom of the fingers, fingertips. And the same here. So I can add this little triangle. Uh, four fingers and the big, big finger is separate. Something like this. And then I connect the shoulders to the neck. And what happens if I, I can lift it a little bit, so I think uh, the head is too big. So I can just literally move in a little bit and make it smaller. And then I'm not adding any facial features because first of all, I'm going to peel the uh, color that I chose. So it can be any skin color that you selected. Highlight with the lighter shades that you have on your palette. That would make a difference. Good. <laughs> Need to flip this over. <laughs> Need to plan out what I'm gonna do before I do well, it. <laughs> I'm making an orangutan looking lady right now. I'm gonna have to fix that. <laughs> From this point, we could just take brown and go over the sides. So we are just creating a darker tone on the side, which makes like a part of the shading. No, her hands are the hands, and you are not doing all the hands today. who just draw what they like visually but do not uh, are not really descriptive it can be any skin color it 
because not every artist says he has an agenda or anything, uh, say, talking about um, anything related to uh, the controversial topics, anything around that. Usually artists are just saying, okay, it's visual appealing to me, and I like how it looks like, that's why I paint it. Mm. So if you ask many artists, why do they draw or paint people? Uh, why do you draw people? Why do you, like this, this style is like asking, why do you draw like this flower? Why not this flower? I like this flower more. So it's basically going into someone's personal choice that people cannot really destroy sometimes. So this question might be controversial by itself. And especially when people show what they do, so people can draw, like someone might like drawing circles. And it's like a psychological question, like why are you drawing circles? Why are you drawing like, triangles? Mm -hmm. Like it shouldn't be taken from a psychological point of view because it's not what artists do. Some artists say their main goal is to just feel clear, like reach clarity. And that would be their basic idea of why they paint. And it's not about the result, it's about the process. It's about how they feel after they paint, right? It's about talking to someone through an image. It's not for everyone. But most people say I just like drawing women. And I was drawing women just because it was like appealing in a sensory way. But does it mean, why do I like how it looks like? I cannot explain that. Why am I drawing a woman? Why I'm not drawing men? Like, I draw men sometimes. For me, but women are all curvatures and circles, and men are all angles. <laughs> and so I struggle with men sometimes to make them look human. They end up looking alien. <laughs> but my women end up very buxom. <laughs> Again, uh, a painting can show a lot about, not the artist by oneself, but the mood. If you see, like, by a picture, by a painting, by a drawing, uh, I'm not talking about people who say, oh, they're psychologists, they know more about. You painted a triangle, many triangles, so you were violent or something. This is just not wrong. It's, wow. it's wrong. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. I can tell it's wrong from the very beginning of it. But I would never like say it's right because it's not. But uh, it can be that psychologists do something different and they literally look at how you respond and stuff like that. And then they come to conclusions. So it just feels like a test. And when people are tested or um, find something negative in their life, their paintings are getting distorted. So if you find a distortion from your regular, uh, you might think, okay, that's an influence from somewhere, and it might be, and it's not my style, it's something. So usually artists deal with a lot of influences, and it does not have to be their own even understanding, because the understanding is not there yet. Because in art, we can see things that, that do not get to our consciousness completely. So by what we see when we create, we can actually know something. But it's not, it's, this is not information for us to think about because it all is being decided and thought of separately from, so it's not recommended for you to think about it too much. But by someone else's art, people can tell, like, okay, here, something happened here. And it does not have to be a personal experience as well. So you can just see something on the way when you're just passing someone on the bus and you look at someone and it might catch a reflection in what you paint. And you never know, you never pay attention. So there are too many factors to actually judge a uh, painting by uh, an artist do this because no, there is no answer usually. 
And many artists have this second thought and they paint something and then they sit down and start painting. So this second thought is usually right because this is what they evaluated So let's say, what's the evaluation here? Why are we doing it? So are we going by the script, by a traditional teaching of how to paint, or we are going just by um, our inner resource or our communication that we're not aware of? Is this communication? So what about highlights? So let's think about highlights. Where do they usually fall on? So for highlights, many people take just white. Or oh, we can make a highlight with this green badge, with this one, warm white, and it works too. So not everyone uses highlights the same way. They could be just there, uh, not blended, or some artists would blend them in a little bit. So here, uh, usually the forehead, the nose, this part of the nose, the lips, cheeks, not always. Um, each part of the body, the belly, maybe. Not everyone would put highlights there. Maybe on one side of the arm, here, here, here. Some artists would avoid highlights at any cost. So they would just blend everything in and not leaving it. So we could just add them, but it does not have to be a necessity. And then we could add just plain white to make it lighter if we want to. Okay. And what about dressing up? What about adding hair? I did not decide which skin tone I'm going with with them. I just added a lot inside. So I don't know. I even did not draw hand yet. Okay, so uh, again, painting. When you paint, um, it was someone who was talking about that. Paint on your strongest mood and paint on your weakest mood. When your mood is just totally off and you feel like you're not holding it together. And uh, just look at what happened there. And I would say when someone Usually art is taking down the influences that are there that are negative to you. Like painting usually is what? We got praised somewhere in the childhood. We keep drawing. We got praised for something when we were young adults. We keep doing things. We got not supported for something. We stopped doing that. So that usually shows people do not want to go to that direction or you don't want to go that direction or it's not your plan, right? And then you can argue with it if you want to, but do we argue when we're weak? Do we argue when we're strong? Like usually people don't want to argue through words. So we do not want argument in art as well. Uh, usually art reflects, if you have inner arguments, psychologists can tell you that by your art. They can tell you that, but if there is someone who was condemned for something, and people say, okay, draw me this. And people draw you something. And you would say, like the person that looks at it, you know what, you had trouble with this and this and this person, or friends, or family member. And they could tell you that. But not everyone has this type of knowledge. So it's recommended to not, again, not think about your own blockages that were there, but it's recommended to think about what you can do 
and develop every single thing that was praised, which you don't think about it too much. It just gets there because people start moving from support, real support. If it's real support, you can feel it. You can feel that it works out for you. And if you don't feel it, it might be, well, we tend to not blame ourselves. It's not good to blame ourselves for things like that, right? Oh, it doesn't work out, so why? Because how much time did you put in this exact task? This task is one of the most complicated tasks. Drawing or painting a figure. And artists do not get to that point when they actually feel very confident. Um, also, what is confidence? Confidence can be, I can be confident in this room, in this chair, with this brush, with this brush, not with this brush, not with a palette knife, not with a stick. I can feel confident when I am at this safe place, right? So horizons, if you're in a situation in which you feel pressure, do you do the same thing? No. So it's more of, okay, how do I actually get to that part when I can feel relaxed and I can actually do the right thing in this exact setting? Or do I want to avoid the setting at all costs? Or I can um, a little, to have a little bit of, um, mm, let's say it's not pressure, but usually people say it is pressure. When you go out uh, and you have, as an example, you have paranoid thoughts, right? It might happen to many people. And why it happens? Usually uh, there are several factors that contribute to it. And it doesn't have to be medication that was not taken properly, right? Or something else. And just let's talk about psychological factors. It's um, it's something your body tells you, okay, stay home, uh, do not go out, because it gives you uh, this feeling, like I cannot go out, you're blocked out from going out. So every time you go out, you need to push yourself and when you go out, you feel better because you spoke to real people, and these real people do not condemn you or treat you like you think they do. And you get reassurance, but you come back home and you start feeling it again, right? So this is, is it a safe spot or actually is it good to go out? So people cannot explain, it just goes by feeling, right? You feel that you can go out, or you feel you cannot at any cost, no one can make you, no one can reassure you, you just stay home. And then uh, you go out and you feel better, but then something happens and you go back again, feel it. You can't do it anymore, but the next day, you can, so what do we do in this kind of world, in this kind of setting, when it feels like every single person in this world is against you? Every single person treats you like uh, they have something against you, or they do not like what you talk about. They do not like what you are. They do not see yourself as a real person. They think you're an ally. Like there's so many thoughts that people can get when they have um, certain mental health conditions. And is, is it forever? No, it's not. But people who go through it, they receive some kind of a I do not call it a vaccine, but it's experience that people dealt with, and if it's dealt well with, people have a certain knowledge uh, that other people are getting from a different source. So it's a completely different source people are getting their information from. So what is our information about? We just start believing in God's plan as an example. Not everyone is religious. Not everyone believes the same way. So people would believe in what? People would believe in the universe. Universe is giving you the good wine. Universe is telling you um, something good. So uh, the pronoia is a condition that was, it, it's the term that not everyone likes, but it's spoken about positive, uh, while you're in a negative situation or in a negative created situation that is not created by your mind but your mind do not does not have power to react on 
too many negatives, so your mind breaks. So what is a reality? There is a, some reality that is created and recreated. Every single time our mood improves, we're not there anymore. So if it improves from here to here, it's many, many times. We do not see it, we do not count it, we do not measure it. Same with painting. There is no measurement here, zero. But how do people like improve it. their moods? Uh, are all compliments good? No. No. No, and sometimes silence is best. And sometimes you cannot make a person believe the compliment if it's not told the way it's supposed to be told. Mm. Sometimes people have the tone of voice that they cannot say the compliment the exact same way as someone else does because they need to have their own way of saying compliments. Okay. Sometimes it's compliments that are not in words. A lot of people would think really good about you, but they would not say any single word you would expect from other people because it's your expectation, right? So. Without knowing a person, it's really hard to actually feel um, you're being supported. Especially if a person is not connected as much. So when the connection is not a big connection, uh, paranoia can take over. Like you can trust your family, you can trust your friends that you know well, but usually it affects you in a way that it can go on people you do not know as well as other people. And let's say, uh, which belief is the best? I would say it's faith in people. I do not say there is no higher lower. I do not want to talk about anything religious about the universe. I want to talk about the main basic thing. People are all good. So when we draw paint people, not usually artists do not choose to draw or paint anything negative. It's usually something you like. It's usually someone you connect with. So I'm not talking about police artists, okay? <laughs> police artists is different. I'm talking about why do you want to draw people? And I would say usually um, uh, people who are good at drawing people, uh, what does it mean good? You enjoy doing that. It, it means you're good already. You enjoy doing something. You like doing it. You keep doing it repeat, repeatedly. So being good at something does not sometimes mean uh, doing exactly what another person does. You do your own thing. You create what you want to express. You have your own personality, your own expression, your own ideas. Skin tone is, it can be different Artists have different ways of painting it. You can just take black and white. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter as much as uh, body. I want to make someone look better. Someone wants to look better. What, what does it even mean? This person might have all the confidence in body that this person has. Like, why would you... Uh, like recreate something that you want to see differently if it already is good for other people. Everybody right? is different. Right. So why would, well, like, it just, uh, not my response, it's just talking about ideal body. Ideal body, okay, it's body, two hands, right? Two, uh, everything, not everyone has two hands. So we are coming to so many topics that when we start talking about that, let's talk about a personal idea of what you want to draw. And I, w I had this period of time when I was drawing people with, um, I would not call them defects. I would say I had people with a head that is not uh, looking the direction the normal people would look. Like it could be something that I see and, and I don't remember about anything about it, but I would draw something like this. Uh, it could be all kind of like studies about what I could see and what I am um, stopping on to be an ideal 
uh, expression that does not look triggering, right, for people. So someone would look at the musical clip. Uh, you remember there was a, a musical video with a woman that didn't have a leg and she got a, a uh, and she became popular because of that. Mm -hmm. right? So you never know what people can think about when they draw or paint. So judging someone else's art is judging by what? Just your perception. This mountain is too blue. Oh well. You know when people start. That's this mountain. <laughs> yeah, this mountain is too blue, or this body is too gray. Like okay, it does not look like that in real life. Uh, okay, what's your real life? <laughs> uh, it shouldn't be uh, ideal. So when we start doing something, we can talk about a lot of challenges that people come to from their painting. Oh, I did draw it too dark, or I want to lighten it up, or I, it's too light, I want to darken it. Do we discuss it? Usually people do not even worry about things like that because it's artist personal something in in own uh, perception, he sees something he wants to paint and its own goal. But what is the goal for you? What would be the goal for you when you draw a body? We might not have any verbal explanation. And when people want explanation from us, we get to actually work on that. But it never comes from an artist personally unless the artist really wants to share. And as everyone said, this can be very intimate work sometimes. You work in your place and you feel comfortable there. So artists actually bring uh, artwork when they, when they have a good feeling about it. So this is a gallery. So what we're doing here, we see artworks of other artists, good mood. It's essential. Um, I'm not, well, I do not think it's good to just say it's a safe place, right? Uh, people make a place safe when they have their own uh, feeling of safety. So when you're feeling unsafe, yes, you can come to a safe place, but what happens after? If there are too many people who do not feel safe somewhere, everyone stops feeling safe. Right? So it needs to be a good combination. It needs to take mental health to actually find what's safe for you because you can just come to work. I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about people who come to work to actually get good wives. And they're like slightly different. So talking about the experiences of mine, personal experience, I got uh, uh, I got sick with schizoaffective disorder, but before I got uh, hospitalized. It was more than 10 years ago. Um, it was at work and what was the hardest for me was to be at work and I was at work for a long time until I actually discovered what was going on. And it took courage to actually just step to work every single day with the sharp partner that I had for that. And each negative, uh, its sensitivity to every single mimic, gesture, words, uh, what people say, what people um, show mostly, because people do not say anything. And it, it's bothering because people do not talk about things that they think uh, they do not like, but they would not talk about it. So any tiny facial expression, or two people standing talking, and I would hear voices coming from them that are not coming from them. So mind can work in different ways, and where these voices come from, it's hard to see. And each time it's different, and when it's closed, it's closed. And then the case, each case is very interesting, because when people heal from something like that, uh, they are twice mentally healthy as when they were many years ago, right? And it takes a lot of negativity to take them down. But also, it's the confusion factor. Without confusion factor, negativity does not work on strong people. 
So when people get confused, negativity gets to them easier. Uh, so if you find that some circumstances are confusing or some, okay, rumors confuse, right? But it's not just that. It's confusions that come from everywhere. They can confuse your mind and it just gets a little bit more sensitive to negativity. So let's keep our mind clear, but let's settle things as quickly as we can. Someone did not do something, it's not on us, let it go. It's not on us. We don't want to overwhelm ourselves just because someone did not do that job there on their own mental health, right? Yes, we need to step away sometimes. Yes, we need to take breaks. Do, my rule was not to take more than two days in a row at home because I was getting really sick and I needed to go out that I'm in the real world. Oh, hello. I know this is quite electric. Can anyone open the door, please? Yes. So, one of the things is just to know it's not real. It gives me a lot of relief when you know it's not real. Real world is way better. We believe people are good. That was my mantra. People are good. Good. Anything that gets into my mind, only anything that gets into your mind sometimes can be really hard to feel, and people believe it's real, but it's not. It's something that is actually really hard to express, especially. Uh, some mind does not work when there are too many distractions. Too many factors that pressure you for some reason. It might happen to healthy people. Absolutely healthy people can get sick from what's going on sometimes. But again, let's remove one factor. Yes, someone did not do a good job. Maybe with what they're reaching in their life. But what we're doing, keeping everything absolutely crystally clear. We cannot talk about things sometimes before they're clear on action, in action. So we work the best we can, and it clears up our mind quite well. We can start clearing up more than just our mind. We can clear up the record, we can clear up a journal, like anything that has something to do with records. At the same time, we're moving from the previous tasks to new tasks, transition can be hard sometimes, so it's better to not be aware of the transition at all. But I talk a lot and I didn't do much here. So I will just add brown as a hair. Is it all the chat? black. So everyone gets the brown tones now. <laughs> A combination of black and brown. Usually it's good to start with dark and add highlights and hair. You can add pink and hair that is not pink because some colors reflect. So we can take warm beige. I didn't take anything for clothing. I don't have any colors for clothing. So let's experiment with pink. She can have a pink dress or a red dress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So 
Oh yeah, and the mantras for me were all people are good. People Let do not them. want to harm me. People do not want to harm no one. so much because I, I don't usually paint without a drawing underneath yeah so it's so different kind of like I and then I keep smudging it you know I feel like I'm getting um, somewhere where I'm not getting myself to it just it it makes you float a little bit what am I doing what am I doing I don't know. Something. <laughs> there is paint involved. That is all I know. <laughs> tone is very questionable because I smudged things and I had to cover it up, but I didn't mm -hmm. have more of the same color. Yeah, I grayed mine out. <laughs> She's like a gray dead thing. Oh, wow. Okay, no. Well, I mean, she could be and that would be beautiful too. But, um, <laughs> I'm like, honey, where's your... Like, I have, I have no, you know... Yeah, mine looks a little questionable. It looks like she put on <laughs> darker makeup than her skin tone. Oh, yours is actually good. You can see all the right things. Just don't look too closely at the skin. And the colors peeking from underneath it. You can tell this is not what I do, <laughs> um, but that's okay. I mean, I'm doing it, so. So this is what you do. Well, it's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I'm doing. It's not what I do. <laughs> She's gonna give her a it? fluffy white dress to cover everything up. Uh -huh. And I love fluffy white dresses. Yeah, you're fluffy white dress. So it's a win-win. <laughs> what? She's going into my signature style. There you go. <laughs> so this is what you do. Cover up everything. <laughs> like my style now. Yeah. It works. Oh, my girl's so short waisted, like she needs more tummy and <laughs> pelvis. She's just tummy. She needs more pelvis. That's like yeah, needing there, more cowbell, but like. There's no pelvis. Pelvis. <laughs> <laughs> it's like belly button legs. <laughs> Yeah, Kate's here to show us how to paint, <coughs> and we're here to show you that anyone can paint. <laughs> Although, well, Abby is very good at drawing. They're very cartoony. So, look at mine. Isn't that a <laughs> It can't be more cartoony. Um, well, I just realized also her skin tone changes when it gets to her body. I need to go that. Oh no. Maybe she's just wearing a lot of makeup. Yeah, that's not great. Uh, she got spray tan. <laughs> that can be dangerous. Um, <laughs> those tones, those tones.
Maybe she should literally wear a tire. <laughs> I feel like that would suit her right now. Um, but no. <laughs> Something like that would probably be in a fashion show. That would be so funny. <laughs> uh, an actual, or like, just a couple of tires, that's, that's the look. Right? Uh. Getting paint out of a bottle is one of the hardest things in the world sometimes. When it's like nearing the right? Tea, yeah. It's just, <laughs> man, I feel bad <laughs> for my neighbors sometimes. Because both paint markers and last bits of paint, I'm like, whap, 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 whap. Yep. You know, it's like 9.40 at night. I'm like, but I need this orange. Right? We're getting on to an hour and 15 minutes here now. Yeah. What time is it? It's 2.50. It's way what? It's 2.50. Oh, oh, we gotta go. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I have to go. I want way more than <laughs> what I did here. <laughs> I guess that means we have to finish later. I'm not sure I want to work on it. Because yeah. if my mood does not allow me, I cannot work really. I can, I can uh, talk about something, right? We I feel that. something really good that I cannot really paint uh, what I planned. Yeah, so you I did an amazing job with that. I'm loving the colors. The red is just stunning. That's just the best thing. Sometimes it's those little, what is it, like happy accidents is how they, how they say it? Oh, oh. Yeah, for yeah. me, it would be unhappy accidents. Oh. My mind does not feel so No, I understand that. <laughs> but it looks beautiful. Absolutely. And I think that's an important thing, just to know when you're done for now or when you're done altogether. Like you can set it aside and say, this this is what this piece is for today. And that is perfectly okay. Um, I know that, you know, my emotions get in the way of a lot of creation for me and um, it used to really bother me when I'd start something and it just became something entirely different. But now I'm able to say, well, this is what this intent, this piece intended to become. So it is exactly what it needs to be. And if someday I come and I adapt it, that's okay too. But today, this is, this is what it's meant to be.
the background is good because I can go around everything and I can leave it like this for now. And then I could possibly create something better. But right now, I'm just saying my mom does not allow me to work on it too much. And I say, yeah, when I'm not in a good mood, I can. I cannot focus on anything more. And I want to be in a good mood, obviously, but, uh, well, I need to come back home and be in the best mood I can because it's my son's first day. Oh, how old? 17. That's, that's powerful. He's a man, right? Yeah. <clears throat> oh. I'm not cooking, I'm not having any time to cook, I will be coming back home, we've got the cake, and we have, um, I will order food, mm -hmm. I don't have time to cook anyway, he likes food that I <laughs> That is a perfect plan. Well, happy birthday to him. I would have gave him a gift before I left, but he was still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I always figure, you know, if it's your birthday, you should be able to, like, sleep in as long as you want. I don't know what my plan was with this dress, but it did not turn out right. This is supposed to be a dress. It's supposed to be like Ooh, two pieces and yes. sort of Grecian. That's gorgeous. I like. I, I, she she was all kind of naked when I was looking over that before. Yeah, now, yeah. She, now she is cloaked. That is beautiful. Thank you. She looks like she's chubby, but she works out like a boss. <laughs> She's got some abs going on. I wouldn't say chubby. I would say like perfect hourglass figure. <laughs> What's that word that um Herculean? No, the like <laughs> Zoftic was the word that like I think that wasn't that the word that they used to use? Um what's her name? That comedian. Arr, I can't think of how I'm dying. She she's oh, she's amazing though. So I have to think of We have to go. I do have Yeah, to go. we should also Probably yeah. end the live soon. <laughs> we're talking all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're still on. Okay, I think we need to just wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> and I just want to improve my mood. And tomorrow is the April 1st. I hope oh, I will. will. So. My mind is just not working properly lately. Last couple of days, it just keeps. Well, thank you for being honest about that. That's mm -hmm. very powerful. And I think that you're very brave for for sharing, you know, and just even just continuing to try to create through that. Um, so thank you for that. It could be a good example of uh, what works the best with certain mental health conditions is not staying, like staying home by some point is good. But sometimes but it isolates. Yeah. It isolates and then it's harder to get back. And when you just keep going, and I know it might be faulty in some tasks that some tasks do not work the way you want because they don't. But it's just learning with time that these tasks were supposed to be like that, or just don't touch anything until <laughs> you feel better. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> and we never know that mood can be really. It can be like five minutes, and if okay yeah. it's not as continuous as it was for that one 10 years ago I would say I had it continuously yeah. uh, pressuring yeah. now many years later the difference is on how much it lasts it's just something the shortest I could possibly get so it makes a huge difference when you don't have it continuously pressuring mm -hmm. it just you get relieved and it does not come back hopefully yeah, but yeah, it's not, it never stops, it never ends. It, it's good, it ends, it stops, and tomorrow I'm coming back home and I'm going to celebrate 
and mm -hmm. I can keep this mind in my mind. And again, making us believe, uh, you know, people cannot really believe themselves to the very 100% until they see it. Yeah. Right? So I just see it's not my best. <laughs> it's not my best mode, but. But I can see exactly what you're portraying. Yeah, well, and you, you taught us so much just in your descriptions of how to create these shapes, these forms. Like, I don't feel like this is my best work here yet, but I'm learning things. That I, like, I've never been able to create human forms at all. You actually and, did pretty well. Um, Thank you for sharing this time with yes. us. Yes. Oh my gosh, thank you. Okay. I love it. We, we will not be on next week because it is... So next week is Good Friday. It's Good Friday. And the week after, Oli's taking over. Yes. So oh, we're going to come up oh, with something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know yet, but we'll find oh, out. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone. Have a good weekend.